PNR Networks is a member of Patreon. Show your love for our shows by joining our ongoing fundraising campaign and get some fantastic perks in return. Check it out and become a Patreon sponsor. You can sign up at patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, backslash PNR Networks. And thanks for your support. This podcast is a member of the Blueberry Network. Blueberry. No E's. That's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-R-R-Y. Dot com. Blueberry dot com. This podcast is a proud member of the Lamb Podcasting Network. Find the network at largeassmovieblogs.com. It's Kim versus TC in the battle of the lists. My list is better. My list is better. My list is better. No, it's not. My list is better. Kim or TC, who has the better list? From Subject Cinema, this is Front Row 5 and 10 with Kim Brown and TC Kirkham. Hey everybody, welcome to another week here on Front Row 5 and 10, brought to you by the good people that bring you subject cinema. That would be me and him, the me being Kim Brown. And the him being T.C. Kirkham. Hi. Hey guys, sorry we're a day late. We had some commute problems yesterday, so that's why we're on Friday instead of Thursday, but we'll Uh be back next week at the regular time. Uh, we hope you enjoy listening to our show, and uh, we hope you'll enjoy this month, as because we won't be doing Subject Cinema this month. You'll be getting this out more often and a few other things going, yes. too. And we hope that you'll write us and let us know what you think of these lists by checking us out at Front Row at PNR Networks or uh, also Subject Cinema at PNR Networks or Popcorn and Roses at Yahoo.com. Yep. We want to hear from you. Um, okay. Okay. Ah. This was your idea. Yeah, it was. We want to give a disclaimer up up front on this one. If you have recently eaten uh, or are eating, you may want to put the food down. Yeah. We are counting up this week, my choice, the top 10 disgusting snack foods or drinks. Uh, By discussing these, we mean these are flavors and combinations that we probably wouldn't put anywhere near our mouths, although places in other parts of the world find them as regular snacks. Yes. Most we're, of them. We're just saying we find these things horrible. If they're things that A you like... A couple of these actually came from the U.S. too, which is frightening. Yeah. If they're things that uh, you like, great. We're not saying stop eating them. No. We're just saying some of these things we wouldn't eat if you put a gun to our heads. And as as a plug, well, you can also catch some of these. Eric and Valerie Lyon over at K-Babble, along with their family, uh, mm-hmm. are very adventurous and occasionally run a Cave, ba- Cave Babble Eats Odd Things. Yeah. Um, and uh, th- these might fit right up their alley. So you might want to check that show out at KBabble.com. They're a great show. Let me let me put it to you this way. If somebody gave me the choice between <coughs> eating some of these foods or watching the future, mm. I'd actually watch the future. Oh, God. That's bad. Yeah. Um, the future Again. is a really bad movie by Miranda July. Uh, anyway... Um, all right, so I guess since it's my list, you get to start. Yes, this is a mo- this is probably the most recent thing I've heard of since we decided to do this list. Um, <laughs> my number ten, mustard flavored ice cream. <laughs> we yeah, saw they just this- had this for yeah. for some kind of holiday recently, M- National Mustard Day, I think it was, or something. This is not a joke. It's not a promotional item. At least I don't think it is. It's actual ice cream that is the color of mustard and is flavored like mustard. It was available only on the one day, though. So yeah, but it was made by French's, right? Was who made Might it? Have been, it? Might have been. I'm not sure. It was a promotional for the National Mustard Day. I'm just like no, oh my gosh, no, oh sweet Caroline, no. I mean, that's and I like mustard. I happen to yeah. like mustard quite a bit. I you know I like it on burgers. I like it on pretzels. I like mustard, but. Ice cream? <laughs> That's just wrong. The only don't, way... Don't, don't call Hiroyuki Sakai. 
No. Who had a history of making awful like sounding ice creams on Iron Chef. I'm sorry. Ago. The only reason I can think of to eat this would be if somebody had already swallowed poison <laughs> and you were trying to make them puke. Okay. My number 10, mustard ice cream. I actually have a couple Eek. runners up because these are two things that I would actually try if given the chance. And they don't sound that bad to me. And they've actually gotten quite a few fans out there. Okay. The first one is the wide assortment of different flavors of Kit Kat bars that are available in Japan. Mm -hmm. There are like 140 different flavors, including wasabi, creamed corn, uh, cherry blossom, all these other ones, in addition to the usual white and dark chocolate that you get here and, and the regular milk chocolate ones. Yep. The other one is a specialty of a small... Mom and Pop popular ice cream parlor in uh, Australia. I think they said it was in Adelaide. Uh, I can't remember the name. of the, I tried to find the right name of the place, but I couldn't. They have begun offering fish and chips gelato. <laughs> now, hear me out. No. <laughs> this isn't actually, does not actually have fish in it. It has a sweet, salty mix of flavors with bits of batter in it to make it crunchy. And I actually thought that sounded kind of cool. I, I mean, I would try it. I imagine there's some kind of a fish flavoring in it, too, but... Well, you're know. also the weirdo that wanted to try lobster ice cream. Yes, I still we, do. Yes. I still do. And garlic ice cream, which was what the Gilroy Garlic Festival was most pop, was most known for until the shooting a couple of weeks ago. It's a shame. Loved uh, Gilroy. <laughs> yes, much so. And El Paso and Dayton, too. Yes. Um, my number 10 is the other one that I would actually give a, cha- a chance to, but I don't think it's made anymore. I looked around, and, and uh, I, found a, I found a bottle of it, but I don't think it's still a manufacturer. It's made by a company called Bucket Fizz Butter Soda. It is uh, t- flavored like melted butter, and I love butter. And I don't think I would have that much of a problem with this. But I, um, it is, an, I believe, yeah, I couldn't find the country of origin, but I do believe it's from the USA. And I, oh there's boy. another soda that's even more gross coming up. This this is, um, I, I wouldn't have a problem with this. I, I like butter, but I don't know if I'd like it with fizzy, which is just be weird. Oh, um, my number 10, Bucket Fizz Butter Soda. I believe okay. it's from the USA. My number my number nine <laughs> choice is guaranteed to piss you off. Uh oh. My number nine is holiday spice Pepsi. It's an acquired taste. I love holiday spice Pepsi. I wish they still made it. Holiday it was great. spice Pepsi was a an it's attempt- Pepsi with cinnamon in it. it. Yeah, it was was didn't have cinnamon and vanilla. Cinnamon, little nutmeg, maybe a little vanilla. Oh, I loved it. I, and I it came out a couple stuff. of years ago, and we bought a bottle of it. A couple years ago. You're, you're wishful well, thinking. While late a, 90s. While late back. Ni- late yeah, 90s. While back. <laughs> and we bought a bottle of it, and we both you know, poured ourselves a cup, and we both took a taste. And he went, wow, that's amazing. And I went, wow, I out. think I just poisoned myself. <laughs> this stuff was noxious. There no. is no other word you could strip paint off walls <laughs> with this stuff. I'm sorry. If you have, yes, it is an acquired taste, and I didn't acquire it. Mm-hmm. So my number nine, holiday spice Pepsi. I'm sorry because I can't Yuck. stand Crystal Pepsi, and, and you like that stuff. I did. To me, like, that tastes like burnt rubber tires. You know, if I tried it's it now, awful. I might not like it. You know, you, your tastes Ugh. do change. I mean, when I was yeah. little, when I was a little kid, I used to eat raisins by the box. Now yeah. I can't even look at yeah, them. Yeah, I know. I just, um, my number nine is is the only generic thing on my list because they're available everywhere mm-hmm. around the world, including the U.S. There's quite a few stores around the country that specialize in gross candy for kids, and this yeah. is at the top of the list: bug lollipops. These are lollipops with an actual candied bug of some sort stuck in the middle. Yep. They usually come with crickets, grasshoppers, tiny scorpions, or mealworms. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, no. I don't care if the lollipop is the most delicious hard candy on the outside. I am not putting that thing anywhere near my mouth. Do they take the stinger off the scorpion? I would hope so. I just... <laughs> I mean, scorpions, that's the first thing I think of. Scorpions I know. Scorpions are those. a delicacy in some parts of Central and South America. Yeah, I would not touch them with a bugs are eaten all over the world, <laughs> except the U.S. Except in the U.S. Yeah, and I just find it utter. I, I mean, these just oh, it's just gross. 
Number nine, bug lollipops. Okay. My number eight <coughs> is and that's something... tame compared to the rest of my list. <clears throat> oh, that's disconcerting. <laughs> uh, my number eight is something you've actually already mentioned, but I went specifically. Oh. As you mentioned, Japan has I know gone what this is gonna be. <laughs> Japan has gone ballistic for Kit Kats. Now the reason for that is because the word Kit Kat is very close to a Japanese word or phrase or something that means good luck. Mm-hmm. So that's why they really like them. Besides the fact that Kit Kats are just freaking delicious. Yeah. And we have all kinds of flavors of Kit Kats now in this country too. We have white chocolate, there's dark chocolate, there's milk chocolate. That's about it, right? You know, well and they have well yeah, <laughs> but like at Halloween they have green yeah, but they're Kit flavored Kats. like white. They're white chocolate yeah. with a color green yeah. and, and the orange. We, right. we found out we didn't like. Which we don't like. Yeah. No. But as I mentioned, Japan has gone a little bit bonkers. They have all kinds of amazing <laughs> flavors, and some of them do sound actually pretty neat. Uh, apple, green apple, rose petal. The tea ones stuff like sound that. good, too. Green tea, stuff yeah. like that. And then we get to my number eight. <laughs> Wasabi. Wasabi. <laughs> Wasabi Kit Kat. I'm sorry. What kind of an evil son of a bitch came up with this idea? I'm very sorry to whoever did The same one that came up with my number five. You'll I'm see what sorry, I mean. but for those of you who have never had the delight of trying wasabi... Um, you want me to tell a story? If you feel like you must. We went to a place in that's no longer there in Boston called Marche Move and Pick one night for, for dinner. It's this great market style restaurant that we both adored, and of course mm-hmm. they snuck out of town on you know a few years ago. Um, she always got sushi when they went there because they made it fresh. It was really good, mm-hmm. and I was off getting my food at one of the market stations, and I come back to find her completely red faced. Now let me pick up the story from mm-hmm. here because you weren't there for this part. Uh-huh. So I went and got my sushi. Now I'm a very timid sushi person. I don't go for like octopus or eel or anything like that i'm not that brave yet um i have worked up to spot you know like tuna and you know things like that and salmon and stuff but i and i got i started you know baby steps i got california rolls and that was my exclusive thing which are basically crab avocado a little a little bit of uh, other things in it mm-hmm. and, and just eat rolled up nice. in yeah. rice and occasionally rolled up in flying fish eggs on top of the rice which is just so good she loves those yeah. i could eat f- flying fish yep. eggs like anyway. crazy. Anyway, so I get back to the table and I'm setting my things up and I'm putting things here and there and the other way. And now I'm, like I said, I'm very new with sushi at this point. Yes, she And is. there's this little pile of very green shavings. It looks almost like a little pile of clay, almost like, or modeling clay or something. And I'm like, huh, I wonder what that is. So I take one of my chopsticks And I can eat with chopsticks. Jealous? And I poke a tiny bit, and I mean tiny bit, of said green stuff on my chopstick. And then I put it in my mouth, on my tongue. Anybody ever, oh, I don't know, accidentally stick a blowtorch in your mouth? That's what this felt like. There was heat. There was pain. There was heat and pain. I got introduced to wasabi, eating wasabi alone, by itself, with nothing around it. it was no more than a pinhead of it. Yep. With nothing around it to counteract the heat. I walk back over. She's got, she's sitting there. Her face is beet red. She's guzzling water. Tears rolling down her face. I look at her. I look at her plate. And I look and I smile and I said, you tried the wasabi, didn't you? (laughs) And then... My love, my sweet, my Amzadi, the man who has said that, you know, I am the love of his life and all that other crap. Started having peals of hysterical laughter. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to know I amuse you when I'm in pain. <laughs> so anyway, so that that <coughs> pretty much soured me on wasabi for a while until I finally figured out, like, you know, oh, wait, you're supposed to take the wasabi and put it in things. Because when you do that... You have this lovely offset of heat for just one little second. It's just bing and it's gone. Mm-hmm. And that's really nice in the middle of sushi. It's very nice and I would highly recommend it if you know what you're doing. Just be glad you didn't take the whole pile and put it in your mouth. Well, I'm not an idiot. Uh, 
No, most of the time you're not. But when you get curious about something, it, it might have taken a bigger piece. Well, of it. you know, people yeah. people have brought up more than once that I was a cat in a former life. So apparently, that part of my former life decided to to rear its furry little head <sighs> at that point. So anyway, back to the list. Wasabi Kit Kat. This is an actual thing. Yeah. This actually exists. Sweet mother of all that is decent and holy. Why? <laughs> I'm just, why? I just can't picture eating this. I can't picture having a, and, and these are regular sized Kit Kat bars. Well, they're, they're, they're coming, they come in two. They don't come in four. There was only two of them. Yeah, okay, right. So it's half a Kit Kat bar. Yeah. But it's still, that's it's way It's the Halloween more, size ones. Uh huh. It's the Halloween size ones. They're a here. little bigger, aren't they? Well, I mean, they, they, they come in packs of two, not um, four. Okay. So. Yeah, that's way more mas- wasabi than one human being should ingest <laughs> at one time. I'm sorry. Well, I guess I think it's just like a light taste. I I realize there are a couple of videos online where people are actually trying every flavor, and and they're really fun to watch. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, absolutely not. Not in this lifetime. No nine yet. Forget it. No way. Number eight, wasabi Kit Kat. That's just wrong. So you don't want those under the Christmas tree this year. Okay, just checking. My number eight, I don't want under the Christmas tree either, and I don't think you would either. Well, since it's August and... Well, you know, it's still coming up. Yeah. Um, and we just got through Christmas in July, and thank so God. so is my birthday. Shop early, shop yeah. often. Um, number eight, I saw this and I'm like, are you kidding me? I can't even imagine even the most adventurous child wanting to try this stuff. Mm. Because it just sounds disgusting. And it's another soda. Lester Fixins Bacon and Chocolate Soda. <laughs> Why would you take two of the most perfect things ever and ruin them like that? Now, bacon is fine. Chocolate is fine. Chocolate bacon is not and fine. Chocolate, chocolate together. Is, chocolate is not fine. Chocolate is wonderful. Chocolate and bacon together are not bad. We've said, seen that in cookies. They're actually mm-hmm. not bad. No. It's weird, Putting it it's not... into a carbonated soda uh, is just not my idea of a refreshing drink. Oh man, um, that is not uh, cool. Lester, Lester's, Lester, Lester's fixins. Okay, I I don't know what kind. Again, I think this is a U.S. company. I don't know. I couldn't find it. I'm like, oh my god! You got it's basically from what I gather a chocolate flavored soda with bacon flavor in it. And I'm like, well, uh, number one, I don't understand the allure of chocolate-flavored sodas. No. There are a few out there. I, I mean, real honest sodas, not you who That's not really soda. Um, but soda, there are a few of them. I've never liked them. I've tried them a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Um, this was just, uh, no, sorry, pass. If it's the only drink in the room, I'll, I'll die of thirst. Number eight, Lester's Fixin's. Bacon and chocolate soda. Okay. Uh, number seven is one of the generic ones that I had to put because mm-hmm. a lot of restaurants do this. Okay. And I've actually tried these. So I actually can speak from experience that I will never try them again because uh-huh. it's just wrong. Okay. My number seven are fried pickles. Oh, yes. I just, you know, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. That They've works, become quite popular that, in that, the Northeast that, that recently. Stand, that works when it comes to cloning, and it also works when it comes to fried things. I mean, when you go to a fair, they have fried everything. You know, they have fried Coke, they have fried beer, they have fried butter, they have fried dough, they have fried everything you can think of. Fried cookies, fried, you know, candy and all this stuff like that. Yep. But I don't know what weirdo... <laughs> Looked at a perfectly harmless pickle and went, you know. And they're they're are they dill pickles or sweet pickles? It usually? depends on the person. Okay. Um, you know, and looked at this sweet little pickle and went, you know what? <laughs> you know what would make this better? Dipping it in batter and then frying it. No. Well, your cousin is quite fond of them. I know. I know. <laughs> I tried them at a restaurant one time, and I'm like. My brain is going, spit it out. <laughs> I was there, mouth, I know. And my mouth's going, I can't, we're in company. Just chew it and swallow it and don't touch another one ever again. Yeah. There's just, 
there's something wrong about it. For one thing, it takes all the snap out of the pickle. Yeah. And that's one thing that makes pickles great is that nice snap when you bite them. Yeah. Ugh, you no. also would not try a kulikol, would you? No. If you, a kulikol is, is a thing in the South. It's dill pickles soaked in grape Kool-Aid. Not just grape. They also they've also done them in cherry. Oh, how they? Yeah. I've seen them just grape mostly. So okay. we won't talk about what that looks okay. like when it's done. Um, <laughs> no, number my number seven fried pickles. Hell to the no. Yeah. Okay. My number seven is the answer to all the moms in the world and their problems when it comes to making their kids lunch for school. You know, sometimes people are too harried to get up and get things done. What easier way to make Junior a really great lunch than to stick a can into his lunchbox? More specifically, something called a canwich. Uh, this is from the U.S. They were test marketed out west. I don't think they're still available. Canwiches, which are sandwiches in a can, come in three flavors, and they are you literally two pieces of white bread that are rather lucky once you open the can, smothered with, in, in the interior, either grape peanut butter and jelly, strawberry peanut butter and jelly, or barbecued chicken. And I'm thinking to myself, yes, when I'm going through the, the chilled food aisle, which is where they're kept, they were kept, I'm going to think, wow, I'm going to pick up Timmy his week worth of sandwiches. Here's a can, here's a can, here's a can. I don't even want to think of what these taste like. I mean, I they were described as very slimy. I hope whoever came up with this idea got canned because this is just, <laughs> wow, that's not I mean, uh, if you're a kid, it might be a cute little idea. Like one of the things when I was growing up, Pillsbury made these things these these energy bars called space food sticks, those were an in thing at the time. They're basically a big Tootsie Roll. Um, and it's like, those were, every kid wanted one of those when I was a kid. Um, I didn't, I never liked them. Um, you know, I see some little kids, particularly first, second, third graders, and mostly boys, liking the idea of opening a can. You pop it like, it, it pops like a pop top, and then you open it, pull the th- thing around it to pull the sandwich out. Um, I can understand kids getting a kick out of that. Anyone over the age kids- of 10, I can't see them eating something like I can like understand this. kids getting a kick out of it. I don't think they'd eat it, but they might think it's funny to take it out of the can. Maybe. I don't know. Number seven, the now infamous can witch in peanut butter grape Peanut butter, strawberry, and barbecue chicken flavors. That is vile. another GI product. That <laughs> is vile. <laughs> Speaking of vile, that brings us to number six. Uh oh. <laughs> now this is a personal thing. Okay. This is a completely personal. Well, that's thing fine. Because I know I happen to know that a lot of people like these things. Okay. For the life of me, I have no idea why. Okay. My number six has to do with peeps. Now, (laughs) y'all know what peeps are. I don't have to explain it. You know, and they've got, you know... Peeps, the other building material. (laughs) I'm sorry. Well, I don't like marshmallow anyway. I don't either. And there's just something about those things that just... Yep. Irritate me. Yep. I don't know what it is. Okay, but for some reason, you know, a couple of years back, people got the idea. Well, let's put peep flavor in this, that, and the other thing. So imagine our complete horror one day when we're tooling around our local grocery store and we're in the cookie aisle. Oh yeah, <laughs> because duh, <laughs> we're in the cookie aisle because it's us. And we're just like looking around and, you know, looking for our favorites, treats and stuff like that. Yep. And it was like, eh, what the F is this? It's Peep's Oreos. Peep flavored <laughs> Oreos. My number six. Oh my gosh, why? Yeah. I'm d- I'm Oreos doing a lot of weird stuff lately. I am sorry, <laughs> no. It's not, I mean, it's not enough that Oreos, which are really great uh yeah i mean there's there's a lot of sugar in them you know it's cookies and it's 
the filling in the middle, which is, you know, got a lot of sugar in it. Let's make that even more sugary by having it taste like these little marshmallow demons. <laughs> uh, these little unkillable marshmallow demons. You can't kill a peep short of freezing it with nitrogen and hitting it with a hammer. You can melt it, but then it can be reformed. Yeah. If you run them over, they spring back up. If you shoot them, they nothing. They're, it's just, it's horrifying. Letterman actually ran them over with a bulldozer, uh, with a, what are those called? The flatteners? Cement. Uh, the, 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 uh, I know what you mean. The, the steamroller. Yeah, a steamroller. And they bounced right back. Yeah. That's terrifying. You want to put something like that in your stomach? <laughs> your mother loves really? them. Really? Yeah, I know. I'm your sorry, mom. Your mom loves them. <laughs> I'm sorry, mom. But I'm sorry. My number six, Peeps Flavored Oreos. No. No. Just say no. <laughs> Ugh. My number six is the brainchild of a small convenience store chain in the province of Quebec, Canada. And it's mostly marketing. But it's marketing. And it's kind of why it's... I, I, I actually would have put it higher if it had been actual. But it's just the idea that it puts in your head. Uh, this little this little convenience store chain in Quebec offers pizza getty slushies. Oh, that one, yeah. <laughs> you have a two slush machine. These are slushies along the lines of slush peppies or culottes, not ices or slushies. Right. Mm-hmm. One side is pictured pe- uh, pizza. The other side is pictured spaghetti. And so kids think, oh wow, a pizza slushy. I'm thinking, oh, well, I'm going to lose my lunch. Now, it turns out the pizza is actually flavored cherry and the the other one's flavored kiwi. Yeah. I'm like, what the, what freaking marketing person in Canada came up with this idea? I don't get it. This I is like saying it. that, like, like saying that your, your marketing, you know, something as goofy as this potato concoction with cheese curds and gravy and then it explodes around the world. Yeah. Everybody, if you haven't had poutine yet, you should try it. It's very good and very, very high in calories. Yep. Um, but this is just disgusting. Just the name of it is grosses me out. Yeah. The flavors are obviously not really there, but right. It's the, not. It's not. Yeah. Pizza slushy or the. Yeah, oh, it's God, not really wrong. a pizza flavor slushy. Although Ugh. we will get to something similar a little further up that actually is. Okay. Uh, my number six from. I can't remember the name of the convenience store chain, but there's several of them in Quebec. Pizza Getty Slushies. Okay, my number five, I just can't wrap my mind around drinking this stuff. Simply, And I, it might be a cultural thing, I don't know. Oh, um, sounds like we're headed back to Japan. My number five is bubble tea. Ah. Um, bubble tea is a drink that's become very popular in this country. Yeah. It's basically, it's, it can be, you know, various flavors of whatever, you know, drink you'd prefer. The bubbles aren't actually bubbles as in carbonation. No. They're little bubbles of tapioca that are usually different flavored from the actual drink. And they're added to the drink. They're in the drink and they all sit on the bottom of the, of the drink. So usually you, you'll see them like one of the the first time I ever saw it was like it was it was some kind of a pink liquid and the things in the bottom of the uh, I thought they were blueberries yeah at first and um, yeah because they do tend to be large tapioca yeah usually tapioca is about the size of a what a little maybe a large piece of kosher salt yeah these are actually about the size of a pea yeah. And yeah. I and you you drink the drink and you have these little bubbles that go up the straw, I guess, or you drink them afterwards or what? I don't know. All I know is they're small is, enough to fit up straw. Yeah, they do fit up the they straw. They give you an extra wide straw. Right? Yeah. I'm sorry. All I can think of when I'm thinking that I'm drinking something and all of a sudden I feel something in my mouth, my brain's gonna go bug. Yeah. That's the, that's the first thing my brain's going to think is I swallowed a bug. Well, it's just like pomegranate juice with pomegranate seeds in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Probably. Well, I've had pomegranate juice without the yeah. seeds in it. So, But I'm sorry. Bubble tea just, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the name. The look of it just doesn't appeal to me. And, and when you I, don't like tapioca. And I really dislike tapioca a lot. Not as much as I dislike rice pudding because that stuff is just hideous. But my number five, bubble tea. Okay, my number five starts a string here. 
we're going to go over to the United Kingdom for the next three items. They are dun, all dun, 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 <laughs> dun, 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 they are all coming from the snack food uh, type, what we call crisps over there, what are called chips here. The first one, I love this flavor in all kinds of things. I put it in my eggs. I put it in a lot of things that I make. I put it in hamburger. I put it in what it's supposed to go into when you're cooking. You are not supposed to make a whole chip the flavor of this stuff because it can be very overpowering. And I cannot imagine eating them as a potato chip. My number five is Walker's Worcestershire Sauce Chips. Hmm. These are chips flavored like Worcestershire sauce. Now, if you don't know what Worcestershire sauce tastes like, I, I pity you because it's really good, especially on steak and hamburger and in eggs and stuff. Um, but it's made up of fermented all kinds of stuff. Some of it you really don't want to know about. And it's made like wine. It ferments for a year or so and they drain off the liquid and, you know... I don't know, pasteurize it, I hope, because it's probably got all kinds of nasty stuff in it. Um, but I can't, This is why you don't think about what you eat. I cannot usually. imagine eating a chip flavored like Worcestershire sauce. You would have it blowing out your head within two or three chips. What's the point? Because this stuff is strong. Mm-hmm. I mean, the best known brand in the, in the world, the Imperence, is smooth as hell when you're putting it in food. And like on a steak. But in a chip and having that whole thing, oh, I can't even imagine that. And I like that, too. So Mm. I just thought that was really something. Uh, My number five, Walker's Worcestershire Sauce Potato Crisps. Okay, that's funny. Uh, My number four is crisps as well. Uh Uh-huh. I'm very sorry. I don't know the brand. I know where they're from, but I don't know the brand. I'm really sorry. They are from the United Kingdom, but they're from Scotland. So, uh-huh. uh, to all my Scottish brethren out there, I'm very sorry that um, this doesn't appeal to me. Please don't kick my ass, because <laughs> I know you people get a little tetchy about Okay, things. okay. Number four, haggis-flavored crisps. <laughs> Insert deity of your choice here. Why? Would you do this? For those of you out there who don't know what haggis is, let me try and explain. Haggis is the, um, oh boy, it's the intestines and all that um, part of a sheep mixed with oatmeal and uh, spices and what have you and things. And it's usually, it was traditionally cooked in the sheep's um, bladder. Yeah. I don't know if they do that anymore <laughs> as much. I have a feeling they don't. In the UK, they probably do. In Scotland, they probably do. I'm, and, and that's fine. If that's what you're used yeah, to just not and that's bag. what you're into, fine. Not going to knock it. Not going to eat it. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Not putting anything with the word haggis anywhere near my mouth. <laughs> Not happening. And I've put some really strange stuff in my mouth. I know. Family show. I, I didn't know. say a word. I, I didn't know. say a word. Uh, my number four, haggis flavored crisps. Good <laughs> freaking grief. My number four, um, Walkers is the equivalent of Lay's pretty much in UK. They make all kinds of different types of chips. And recently, crisps, excuse me. And they recently have been doing the same thing Lay's has been doing. Asking people, hey, try these, come up with some ideas for flavors and try them. I mean, Lay's has had some wacko flavors that have been Mm -hmm. really good. I loved the roasted garlic chips that aren't available anymore. Yep. A lot of people have sworn by the chicken and waffles one since it came out. It's not available anymore yeah. either. They They're also, all limited they also release. They did dill pickle. They did dill pickle. They've done so many. Cappuccino, And a lot I of think. them were good. And the chocolate dip ones were really good, too. Those are addictive Surprisingly. And we didn't think they would yeah. be, but they were really good. This was another winner of their, of their uh, yearly thing at Walker's. Um... Do you have something to spew in? 
Just out of curiosity. Okay. Okay. My number four, Walker's Cajun Squirrel Potato Crisps. <laughs> um, now, again, it's the idea behind it. It's a barbecue cajun flavored chip with meat flavorings that nobody can really identify. Um, and I'm like, they gave it that name because they knew it would be shocking. Um, but they actually have commercial showing the, like a little animated squirrel as part of the commercial. I, I'm like, oh my god, are you serious? Um, I don't know what's up with you people in the UK. <laughs> I really don't. But it was the winner and is now a permanent part of the Walker's collection. Number four, Walker's Cajun Squirrel Potato Crisps from the UK. <laughs> Are you okay? No. <laughs> Not really, no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that's just, I swear, that's the worst it is on my list. That's the worst one oh. for names and what it is. Oh, dear. The next ones aren't that bad. Um, although I wouldn't try them. <laughs> just, just for the record, you're about to do your Captain America impression. Uh-oh. What the f- <laughs> is wrong with these people? Language? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> what the forking fudging frog is wrong with you people? <laughs> oh, man. I By wish Odin's, you could see her face right By now. By Odin's beard, what is wrong with you people? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm just going to go over and have some Cajun squirrel potato crisps. Oh, my gosh. You know, th- th- there yeah. there is a word that the whole when you were saying what's wrong with people in Britain mm. and all that, and you know, and I'm thinking, you know, there are pro- places in this country where a squirrel is a delicacy, and they also have that same issue. It starts with in and ends with breeding. Um, well, Chris Kimball has talked about having squirrel tetrazzini on America's Test Kitchen. A yes, and of times, he's so. from Vermont. He is. All so right. anyway. Let's move on. So I'm sure, like, driving on paved roads is still new for him. <laughs> That'd be nice. <coughs> I'm just kidding, Britain. I'm just and kidding, Vermont. West Virginia, Vermont. You gave us Ben and Jerry's, but you also gave us Howard Dean's, so. Um, <laughs> and that's and they gave us Chris Kemble, who I love, so And that comes that. from somebody who gives two craps about politics, so anyway. Anyway. Uh, my number three is, um, we're heading back to Japan again. Um, now, when you're thirsty, I mean, really thirsty, oh boy. you know that thirsty feeling you get sometimes? Not that thirsty feeling. I'm parched. Not that thirsty feeling, the other one. Not not the bouncy kabao one. Oh, for Pete's um, sake. Um, when you're, I mean, you're so thirsty, your throat hurts, and you have no spit, and you're just like, oh, I would sell my little sister for a drink, and of something cold and refreshing. And somebody hands you a bottle of Pepsi, and you go, oh, gosh, thank you, nice person, for handing me this bottle of Pepsi. And then you look at the label, and it says one of the ingredients is squid ink. Knew that was My number it. three, Pepsi flavored with squid ink. Mm-hmm. I wish I was making that up. It's not. It's actually a, quite a popular flavor. Yes, I know. They have all kinds of flavors of Pepsi in Japan. Uh, all sodas, not just Pepsi. They have Coke and all those, yeah. all with weird They have all kinds them. of flavors of soda in Japan. Weird by, weird by American That standards. are strange yeah. by our standards, yeah. like salted watermelon. See, I think you'd like that. Well, you we don't I, like salt on no, your watermelon. No, I don't like salt on my watermelon. I've tried it because everybody said, ooh, it makes the flavor intense. It no, does. No, it doesn't. It just makes the watermelon salty and it <laughs> sucks. <laughs> but getting back to my number three, Pepsi flavored with squid ink. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, uh, whew. Now, you've actually eaten stuff with squid, squid ink, ink is in it. very fishy tasting. Yeah. I've had rice with squid ink in it, and it was mm-hmm. delicious. But man, it it was, it is overpoweringly fishy. Yep. I can't even imagine putting that in a drink. I mean, kudos to the people of Japan that when they when they you know capture and you know when they catch animals to to eat them, they use apparently everything. Mm. You know, because squid is a delicacy in Japan, and that's great. You know, if you're into that. But um, no. 
I'm sorry. For one thing, and it, I'm not, this is me being ignorant. I'm kind of thinking, wouldn't it stain your teeth? Or stain I would think your, so, because it, it does have a blue color to it. Yeah, or at least maybe yeah. stain around your lips. Yeah. So great. So everybody knows you've been drinking this stuff, and it looks well, like you. Well, it's just like anybody here who drinks a red pop. It gets red, makes your tongue red, gets your lips red. Right, but do you want to look like you've devoured a Smurf? <laughs> it's not I mean, that. It's darker blue than that. It's yeah. more color of your, of your nightgown. Um. Okay, so my number three, Squid Ink Flavored Pepsi. <laughs> okay, my number three, I'm just going to go in quickly because you've already mentioned it, although I have a brand. Okay. Um, and it's it's the top one of the of the of the chips I don't want to try, Mackey's of Scotland Haggis and Black Pepper Crisps. I'm like I'm like Thanks I don't for coming have, up with the name. Then. Yeah, the, well, there's several of them. This is the one I just grabbed. There's, there's several different makers of them. It's not just mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Um, and and Haggis and Black Pepper. So you've added extra pepper to make it more palatable from eating chips that are flavored like the innards of a sheep. I'm like okay, and I, oatmeal, uh, and oatmeal. Oh, oatmeal! Oh, oatmeal potato chips. That's well, just disgusting. That's what's in hand. I know, I'm but saying, I, so didn't, I hadn't thought about it. Well, it's, in- I've also seen it made with rice. That's not so bad, but it's like, ugh. Uh. Um, no, I'm, I'm. I just had to call out the brand because I happened to find that one, and I'm sure it's popular with the Scots, and that's fine. You know, it's a traditional dish, and, and we yeah. don't. I mean, you know, but I wouldn't put Lutefisk in my mouth either, which is a tradition nope. in northern Minnesota. So. Mackey's of Scotland, Haggis and Black black Pepper, Potato Crisps, number three. Yeah. For those of you all who are going, what the hell is lutefisk? Look it up. Lutefisk is a, is codfish dried and then soaked in lye. Yep. And it turns it. And then rehydrated. And then rehydrated. And it, it turns into basically fish jello. Pretty much. Yeah. I heard about it. Even Alton Brown. Could not stomach this stuff. I'm I heard shows. about it because one of my mystery books that I read. Hi, Joanne. Um, <laughs> they they brought up Lutefisk because her characters from up that way, and I went and looked it up, and I was like, Ugh, yeah. I, I was like, when I read it first, I was like, did they feed this to criminals? I didn't, you know. I didn't <laughs> Number two on my list. There are multiple flavors of this. Oh God, different flavors, and all of them are good old fashioned nightmare fuel. Just the idea of putting this stuff in a soda. It's a small company. They're called Jones Soda. Oh, (laughs) I know what this is. Now, Jones has all kinds of funky flavors of soda, and that's great. Most of them are fruit flavored. They're fruit, yeah, they are fruit flavored for the most part, and they're, you know, natural ingredients and stuff like that. And And I have to be honest, I would try what she's about to mention. I've never tried it, though. They have something called, they have a bunch of them that fall under their Thanksgiving soda line. Mm-hmm. They were actually selling them in a, you could get like yeah. a pack of them yep. that were like mashed potato and butter flavor, mm-hmm. um, string bean, green green bean casserole flavor, turkey and stuffing. Some, some, yeah, turkey, turkey and, and stuffing. Turkey and stuffing flavored soda. <laughs> They're hugely popular at Thanksgiving time. And Jones is a smaller company that's based up here. Yes. They sell them like crazy. I know. I'm sorry. Turkey and stuffing flavored soda. Roasted turkey and stuffing. Roasted turkey and stuffing. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't want to use raw turkey. That would be weird. Um, as opposed to well, this, as opposed you know. to deep fried or or I'm baked, sorry. You know, why like, why is it whenever I look at those things, all I can think of is the only people buying this stuff are hipsters. Yeah. Probably just to show how ironic and they college are. students yeah. to have yeah. have drinking games with. Well, yeah, they're, they're college students. They're drunk. They'll drink anything. Oh, now no, now that's a generality. I'm so, fine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all the college students out there who aren't drinking. Naughty. I'm sorry. Bad Kim, no cookie. Well, the well, col- fine. Let me put it another way. College students are still young and dumb enough that they will do anything pretty stupid on a dare. Great. I hope and we don't lose our college audience from this. Anyway, young and adventurous enough. We'll put it that way. Number two, Jones Thanksgiving soda. Yike. Yeah. So, you guys all know I'm a huge fan of extreme sports. If you've been listening to me on Subject Cinema or anywhere else, I'm a huge fan. He is. Um, and, you know, every year they have different, different, you know, extreme sports stars pushing their favorite products. 
Mountain Dew has been a popular product for many years. Danny Davis has pushed it, Scotty Lego, Louis Vito. All my favorite snowboarders have yep. done it at one time or another. Mm-hmm. Um, because people associate Mountain Dew with action, action and sports stuff and like stuff. That. Yeah. Mountain Dew's done a lot of weird things in my in, in my lifetime. When they started, the entire thing of Mountain Dew when the bot when I first was little, the bottle had like this hillbilly on it. It was like supposed to be like moonshine. Yeah, because Mountain Dew was the slang for moonshine. Right. Um, it was very popular in Ohio. Then they upgraded the image in the eighties, and it became. The highest caffeinated soda in the in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and so but I can't. Along. Well, yeah, but I mean, basic soda. Yeah, I can't even imagine the number two. And once again, it's traveling back to the land of the rising sun. Mountain Dew Cheetos. I think something in my brain just died. <laughs> they came in a little cup. About like this, about, I don't know, six inches high. About the size of a ramen cup. And it was filled with Cheetos from, you know, the Cheetos company, flavored with the citrusy lemon lime of Mountain Dew. And I can't, ra- I love, I love Mountain Dew, and I used to drink it all the time before I started having kidney problems. And I, I, I still think that the, bromiated crap that they put in the diet one that I drank all the time was um, what started the kidney issues, so I stopped drinking mm-hmm. it. But I love Dew, and it's it's a great drink. And this, I can't even wrap my mind about putting a Cheeto in my mouth that tastes like Mountain Dew. No, that's just not right. Now, Mountain Dew slushies I've had. Mountain yeah. Dew, whatever the flavor is that Taco Bell has, I love those. It's not regular Mountain Dew. It's some other kind of it's super... Like Baja Baja something. Blast. Yeah. Love those. But but that's still a drink. It's a drink. <laughs> I, I I mean, uh, that's like you know popping out all the snacks for the Super Bowl, and right in the middle is this is this big bowl of white white colored Mountain Dew Cheetos. I don't think your Super Bowl party is going to go anywhere. No, I really don't. Number two, Mountain Dew Cheetos from Japan. Okay, and you won't find my snowboarders promoting that. I bet even over there. My number one food, snack food, <laughs> or however you want to word it, that I, I, I'm sorry I don't have the brand name. Mm. Seriously, if you are eating, put it down. Uh-oh. This is also from Japan. Oh, boy. This is not a joke. My number one, horse meat ice cream. Oh, God. This is a real thing. I, I don't... I'm not sure what the Japanese word is. I did they have not, raw horse meat snacks, too. I did not write it down. Ugh. Now, I realize we are not one world, as the late Paul Harvey used to say. Yes, he did. And other places have different tastes and eat different things. And horse is one thing that they actually do eat some people eat in Japan not everybody it's not you know it's, it's considered a delicacy it's, it's yes, not it is, it's not widely available right it's considered a delicacy i mean in certain places snails are considered a delicacy <sighs> in other places snails are a pest and you want them the f out of your garden <laughs> so but this is a form of ice it's a, it's an ice cream that has very thin slices of horse meat in it it's usually Purchased by tourists is usually, it's more of a, I, I'd almost call it a gag gift, but I can't think of anybody you'd actually give this to, and well, no, gag it, is it, kind it, of it, self-explanatory. Yeah, I mean, really. Um, but no, it's, and it is a real thing. So my number one, horse meat ice cream. Thank you so much, Japan. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Uh, my number one actually does not come from Japan. It comes from Mexico. And I don't know how anybody can stomach this, but kids down there gobble it up by the by the millions every year. And I, I was reading the description of it. Now, it's a licorice type. The really thin, like, shoelace-style licorice. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's put into a package... Uh, I would imagine it would have to be red. And, you know, most people in America, 
No, basic licorice flavors are black licorice, which is anise flavored, red licorice, which is strawberry or cherry flavored, chocolate licorice, and a few other things. Those are the only three I know. Those are, like, not terribly exotic. No. This stuff is sold in little packets about the size of those... um, bottle caps we used to get when we were kids with the little fizzy candy in them. Mm-hmm. About that size. And they sell millions of them every year. It's one of the most popular snacks in Mexico. It has a sweet, sugary underlying the flavor of the licorice, which is tomato and tamarind. It's called salsa getty. It's designed to taste like salsa licorice. I don't like salsa that well anyway, but eating tomato-flavored licorice is enough to set off my gag reflex. I'm sorry. I can't even get my mind around the idea of tomato and tamarind-flavored spicy but sweet licorice strands. The little shoestrings. It looks like spaghetti. That's why they call it salsa getty. Right. I'm I'm sorry. No. Uh, Not in a million years. I'd I'd rather have... I'll eat a canwich before I'll eat that stuff. That's that's like, ugh, ugh, no. That's like what you would get if you if you. It's what I mean. What are they going to do next? Start candying spam. I mean, great. Oh, ugh. Yeah, but it obviously must be selling a lot if they're selling millions it's of. It's very them popular. Well, it's know. a popular flavor down there. It's like we. See- I don't. I bet I wouldn't see Patty using it on her cooking show. <laughs> I love Pat, uh, Patty Janet. She's she's awesome. Like we said, we are not of one world, so you know. <laughs> Number one, salsa getty from Mexico. Okay, so uh, going from ten to one, my list is thusly: Number ten, mustard ice cream. Number nine, holiday spice Pepsi. Number eight, wasabi Kit Kat. My number seven, fried pickles. Number six, Peeps flavored Oreos. Number five, <laughs> bubble tea. Number four, haggis flavored crisps. Number three, squid ink flavored soda. Number two, Jones Thanksgiving soda. All of them. <laughs> and number one, horse meat. Ice cream. <coughs> Jones has a sweet potato one too, don't they? For that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for reminding uh, my me. My top dear. ten are as follows: Number ten, Bucket Fizz Butter Soda. Number nine, Bug Lollipops. Number eight, Lester's Fixin' Bacon and Chocolate Soda. Number nine, uh, seven, Canwiches. Number f- six, Pizza Getty Slushies. Number five, Walker's Worcestershire Sauce Chips. Number four, Walker's Cajun Squirrel Potato Crisps. Ooh, yum, that Cajun squirrel. Yummy, yummy. Number three, number three, Mackey's of Scotland, haggis and black pepper, potato crisps. Number two, Mountain Dew Cheetos. And number one, Salsa Getty. Now, wait at least a half hour before going back to eating again. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm going. Eric, back. find this stuff. We want to hear what you think of it. <laughs> Valerie, don't listen to him. He's been drinking. <laughs> Heavily. I have not. I don't drink. I know, I know. Don't make me out to be a lush. I, no. Honestly. Fine, fine. Valerie, don't listen to him. He's insane. Okay, I'll take that. Is that that's better? I'll, I'll accept that, yeah. All right, good. I'm whimsically right. eccentric, eccentric. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway. Okay, dear, what have you got up your sleeve for next time? Well, you'll appreciate this. Oh, no. No, you will. Because Whenever she a, says that, it's always a list I find absolutely impossible to put no, together. No, no, no. I don't think you will. Right. I don't think you will. Um, my The list for next week's show is a music category. Okay. It is your top ten and my top ten lists of what were you thinking songs. And these can be straight songs. They can be parody songs. But... It's, you know, the arrangement, the lyrics, the the beat, just whatever you think of with songs that you're like, why did you think this was a good idea? What demographic were you trying to appeal to with so, this? So, stuff like William Shatner's Rocket Man. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. All right. <laughs> so, ne- <laughs> next week's top ten, what were you thinking songs? Or what were they thinking songs? And like I said, uh. they can be... They can be parody songs if you want. 
they can be an actual song somebody thought was a good idea. Can be lyrics, they, can be music, can be arrangements. Okay. Yep. Mm hmm. That for oh, that's some reason, be weird. <laughs> for some reason, they decided to inflict or share, depending on your point of view, <laughs> on the world. Oh boy! Don't forget, subject sentiment is taking a month off. We will be back with a brand new series in September, uh, starting with a you know it'll have a new feel to it. We're going to go back to basics and do stuff like we used to do it. And we hope that you'll enjoy that, and it'll mm-hmm. be premiering Labor Day weekend with our uh, 15th annual Rising Stars honors. So don't forget about that. Don't forget, we also have shows on in the meantime, front row five and ten. Every Thursday, except this week, uh, three minute weekend every Friday with all the latest movies and Tuesday Digitex every Tuesday with all the latest DVDs. Kim has uh, Platinum Roses Garden, which is off for the season. We'll be back in October yes. and currently running rampant with her uh, Ring Around the Rosie, which mm-hmm. is gaining popularity all the time. I hope so. Um, if you want to go back and listen to uh, Platinum Roses Garden, you're more than welcome to. Uh, that is my supernatural podcast. You can go back. And listen to my views on season 14 as we gird our respective loins for season 15 coming in October. And, and final. And the final season. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Bless your heart. Um, <laughs> and also Ring Around the Rosie, which is my wrestling podcast, where this week I am looking at the upcoming Summer Slam card. And um, as both shows are not safe for work. Mm-hmm. We'll have more stuff coming up from the Kirkham Report eventually, and mm-hmm. also Catastrophe Vortex mm-hmm. will return in September again with another format and yep. uh, new episodes. Finally able to get it done. And there's a few new things coming down the pipe, too, in the next few months, including some exclusive Patreon stuff. So if you're not subscribed at our Patreon at the $5 level or above, you're going to miss Ka- Kaiju Corner. You're going to miss uh, what she's done a few episodes of already. Mm-hmm. You're going to miss... Uh, Freeze frame, which premieres this weekend, and we are you're gonna miss. Uh, we will give the free. The first freeze frame coming this weekend is a freebie, but after that, you, it won't be. It has to be as a Patreon, Patreon only. And uh, we have another film review show coming on Patreon too. Yep. So be sure to listen to those and keep up. And don't forget to check out all the stuff we have going on online at East Cinema One, East Cinema Boston, The Kirkland Report, and all of our other wonderful sites, which you can get to by visiting our main site, pnrnetworks.com, or clicking on any of the links in any of the show notes on practically every podcast we do. And also, we've got some great people out there that are part of our little island we of do. misfit toys. Those would include the Lion Family over at Cave Babble. Which we've mentioned because of Cave Babble Eats Odd Things. Yep. CaveBabble.com. And, and our great buddy Anthony Lamberti over on uh, Aunt Bee's Comic Grotto on YouTube. So you can check them out there. You can follow me on Twitter if you like. I'm Platinum Rose Lady at Twitter.com. I am East Cinema One, East Cinema Boston, and TKR Online on Twitter. Uh, mostly on the Boston one. So we hope you will come back next week for our next list. And until then, I'm Kim Brown. I'm G.C. Kirkham. And I hope we can count on you to come back next week and help us count up another list here on Front Row 5 and 10. Count on it. Bye. been listening to Front Row 5 and 10 with Kim Brown and T.C. Kirkham. Podcasting's choice from coast to coast, continent to continent, right here 24-7. The Empire.